Hey guys, it's Roderick, and I'm here for a reaction video from Netflix The Sandman. Um, anyway, hope you guys are having a great weekend. I just wanted to pop in because I just got done watching The Sandman for the second time because I wanted to see, did it really hold up to a second viewing, kind of outside of my awe and kind of wonder, was it really that good of a show? And I have to tell you, it is really that fantastic of a show of a series i think netflix really has a home run on its hands with this show so i wanted to kind of give you some brief overview i'm not going to get super spoilery into it because i want you all really to watch the show but i will give you like a fifty thousand degree above kind of view from the show some thoughts and that type of thing but i'm not going to get super spoilery spoilery into it or whatever so first of all i am not a big neil gaiman a follower or acolyte. Um, I know there are a lot of people who are. Um, I did watch, he's the writer, the creator of American Gods, if you watch that on Stars, which was a fantastic show, the first season and a half-ish or so. Um, really, really good. Um, and having watched American Gods, you definitely see kind of like some of the influences that he uses um, in this in the Sandman. So kind of coming off of American Gods, there's another show on Amazon Prime called Good Omens that I think I'm gonna start to binge watch tonight. Um, it'll be a long Sunday, but whatever. So I think I'm gonna kind of watch that tonight because I really am becoming a really big fan and a really huge fan of his work. So I went into watching this the first time, not knowing anything about what this was, um, having not read the source material. The Sandman is actually based upon one of Gaiman's um, graphic novels or comics, uh, actually, that was done in the 80s and the 90s. So once again, we see kind of studios going to this, what we call existing IP, works that are already ex in existence that already have a really, really huge fan base or following, right? So they really knocked it out the whole, so not coming, so really coming into it without really knowing anything. I was like, okay, it's cool. It kept popping up on my Netflix algorithm. Let's give this a whirl, right? What What is this about, right? Um, so first watch, so my first, you know, on the first watching, I was completely blown away. Um, first of all, there are a lot of familiar characters, I feel like actors in, in this show that, that if, depending upon like what genre you like, you just, there's a little bit of everything. Um, and so I was just really blown by the story and the concept and the way in which it was done. So the same man is 11 episodes on Netflix. And what happens and very, what is done is, is that it's pretty much broken up into really three and a half um, kind of, or maybe four story arcs along the kind of 11 episodes, which I thought was a very clever way to do it, right? So instead of kind of taking one plot line or one storyline and kind of stretching it across 11 episodes, they're really pretty, pretty much go like, you know, they take the narrative and the character and you kind of see him kind of like one problem, solved another problem solved and then there's another underlying problem and they, they call it all kind of run concurrently and the 11th episode really kind of flashes back and kind of buttonholes in the inciting incident and kind of what we see in the first kind of three um episodes or whatever like that which i thought was very very novel and a really really great um, the same man is portrayed by Tom Sturridge, which I kind of was like, okay, he's not necessarily my type, but he definitely, they definitely give him that gothy emo look kind of tease. And I was like, okay. And considering for like probably one and a half episodes, he's completely naked, right? I was like, okay, you're warming up on me. You're working on warming up on me and whatever. So then we also have Gwendolyn Christie. Um, if you know her from Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones, she was also the headmistress in Wednesday. She plays a very critical and crucial character. And then we have Dan Twellis um, from the Harry Potter fans. He was Lupin. And the incomparable Jolie Richardson um, is also a character. So who is the Sandman, right? So the Sandman, played by Tom Sturridge, is really this the Dream King. His name is called Dream. And he is part of what's known as the Endless, right? So the Endless comp is comprised of six siblings, dream, death, despair, desire, delirium, and destruction, 
right? So they're called the endless, where they go on forever. And they're really, they, and they have been anthropomorphized or humanized into these incarnations of all of the endless, right? So we have a very exciting, very interesting, exciting incident that kind of catapults us into where, the, where, we, where we meet the Sandman and what the kind of conflict is. It is a very uh, interesting and riveting conflict and that kind of gets us sucked into the story because there's like a lot of characters and we kind of see what this inciting incident is. And from the resolution of that kind of moves us on to like the next problem and then the next set of problems, but we meet a lot of very interesting characters. So we meet Dream, of course, then the Dream has a crow that kind of talks. There's a black librarian, a talking Jake, just talking jack-o'-lantern, all regarding in this kind of dream world of dreams, right? And the concept of that, everything that man will be or ever will be exists in the realm of the dreams, right? Which makes the dream world very powerful because it can influence what men do, what men decide not to do. And the dream king is a very, very powerful, powerful being. But he's also a counter and match because we end up meeting some of his siblings. We meet death and we kind of, the, you know, the characterization of death I thought was very, very great. We meet his other sibling, Desire and Despair, which are actually twins. Even And that is just really fascinating and kind of the interaction. And we still have more siblings to go. And that was really great. I have to say my favorite episode was the fourth episode. Um because it just really kind of captures the human existence and really the, the interaction between the life you dream, the life you have, and the consequences of your actions. So I really, really, that was, that, you know, was my first, that was kind of like my favorite episode. So when I rewatched it again, I kind of had like, wanted to put like a more critical eye, kind of see, okay, was this really good or was you just caught up in the hype and half drunk with drinking wine thinking this shit was really good? No, like it was really that good. I rewatched it uh, the past couple of days and it really held up to the second viewing. I thought in the first time I watched it that the first storyline or the first kind of plot line was really my favorite and the best and the strongest one of all. But having now finished it again, I thought that the one that begins in the beginning and then the one that kind of buttons holes at the end, Calipi, um, was really the, the two most strongest the middle ones are kind of good. The, you know, the kind of one that comes after that is pretty good, but the most kind of compelling that you're like, oh my God, what's it going to happen? You know, really the first one and then towards the end, right? And the dream, the character Sandman, the Dream King, is not necessarily a super likable character, right? But what the writers do really do a really good job of is really showing kind of how something that could be a centuries or many very, 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 very old does have the capacity to change, right? And that they really, the more time you spend with humans, the more characteristics you pick up on the mom, right? Some of them good, some of them bad. So I really liked um, that characterization. Um, the Jolie Richardson story, the Jolie Richardson storyline, I thought was very interesting. Even though I did have a read the source material, I kind of was like, eh, okay. But that Gwendolyn Christie storyline that occurs in the fourth episode just really blew me away and it really sets us up for some very interesting things going into next season and there's so many things that could go into next season because there's not not a whole lot of loose ends are tied up not necessarily that they're cliffhangers but you know there's a possibility of more and more characters so i may actually buy the trade off of amazon just so i can read because i had to stop the second time i was like okay who's this character okay what do you mean by this and then what do you mean by this and who is this person and you know and i didn't want to jump in and find out the resolution of it but i just kind of wanted to wanted to kind of jump in and see what was happening because one of the things gaiman does is that he kind of mixes in you know greek mythology with christianity with a lot of different other religions which is because which, which which is what we see in American Gods, and he does that in uh, in the Sandman because Morpheus is the Greek god of sleep and dreams, and they kind of created this whole like kingdom of dreams. Um, his librarian Lucian, she's fantastic. One of the things I really liked about this series again, um, it is as far as diversity and inclusion goes. This is on the same par with Interview with the Vampire. This is how you do diversity and this is how you do inclusion. Diversity being giving you, 
give, and giving you entrance into the space, inclusion giving you a seat at the table. And by having different brown, black characters portrayed with depth, such depth and some rich that wasn't so much hooked on their race, but, that, but allowed them to freely act within their space, uh, regardless of their race, was fantastic. Even though the show was like very, very British, right? Like it was, there was, I think there was a lot of British actors. I think a lot of it was filmed in very Britishy places, Britishy places, Britain, excuse me. Um, but there's definitely an English aftertone to the show. It isn't until we get to like the third storyline do we get more of an Americanized um, kind of plot line, but still it's like a very, very um, interesting thing. And there's, a, and, and even in that section was uh, probably the most interesting section is the American, uh, the third storyline, because there's American um, woman and then you kind of have like that whole interaction. So, and she's an African-American woman, or probably African actually, um, character. So I just thought it was just a really, uh, really great way to have diversity, have inclusion. I wasn't really too bothered by having like the non ADOS versus African actors in this because it was, it was so non-essential to the characterization, right? So if you have something, if you're looking for a show to binge and watch on Netflix, check out The Sandman. I did want to get into a whole bunch of spoilers. After you all kind of watch it, maybe after Christmas, I'll go and do a spoilery section so we can have like another conversation. And I think I'm going to go back and watch The Witcher and then we're going to have a Witcher discussion with spoilers because y'all have had enough time to watch The Witcher. And I definitely had some comments and some things considering that we're going to have some major shakeups with The Witcher coming on. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Just want to pop in. Watch this Sandman, let me know what you think, and I'll do a part two with some spoilers, with some comments and some really deep dives in it later on. So anyway, have a great weekend. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.